Ksenia Evgenievna, please tell us what laws does a mage who follows the path of light live by? Does he serve his own God and prioritize this relationship? What about relationships with people? After all, they take a lot of energy and time. Does a light mage have the right to be paid for his work? If so, what should he do when people behave dishonestly? Must he continue to follow his own beliefs despite their behavior, or can he choose which of the people he will help and which he will not? What laws and principles are important to follow? What should he prioritize, his inner voice or other people's desires? Thank you. You know, Anna, the terms, mages of light, light mage, and path of light actually mean very different things in various traditions. I don't know which tradition you belong to, which tradition you are referring to, or which tradition you are alluding to by using this term. So your question itself contains a certain logical mistake. Because the answer to the question of how a mage who follows the path of light should behave depends first of all on which tradition you are talking about. If you're talking about the Christian tradition, that is one thing. If you're talking about the pagan tradition, that is another. Perhaps your reference was to other additional occult terms which are in use in some orders. The path of light and the path of darkness are two ways of manifesting magical consciousness. In the Northwestern tradition, in the Celtic tradition, in the pagan tradition, the path of light means interacting with people, serving people, performing a kind of priestly function. It is healing, it is controlling, it is politics in a way. Especially since, in pre-Christian times, a ruler always performed the function of a priest. Therefore, a mage of light does not focus on contact with his own gods. He doesn't prioritize interaction with them over interaction with people. Mages who follow the path of darkness are engaged in research, in the extraction of knowledge which requires solitude. And in that capacity they have almost no interaction with people. So if you are referring to the pagan tradition, then of course service and interaction with people, regardless of their behavior, is the first priority for a light mage. Because people around behave exactly as you allow them to behave. A mage who follows the path of light is a shepherd leading his flock. If his flock behaves badly, it is only because he has done a poor job of organizing and leading them into the future they should be striving for. By the way, the Christian tradition uses this concept in a similar way. Another thing is that it doesn't even consider the concept of the path of darkness. If we apply these terms to today's life, to today's manifestation, we can say that light mages are people who deal with human problems, such as psychologists, doctors and teachers. If we extrapolate this mission to the social level, dark mages are scientists, explorers, archaeologists, geologists, and all those who study the mysteries of nature. They don't deal with issues that have to do with personal secrets or interactions with people, the path a person chooses to follow also determines his way of life.
It determines what he should prioritize, his inner voice or other people's desires. Actually, neither should be given priority, as you understand. Because even the inner voice still carries the human qualities, and can sometimes get irritated and angry. Just like the people with whom light mages interact. First of all, you have to look at your task, at your mission. If you have it, then everything else is secondary, if you don't have it, then finding it is essential. Concepts such as the path of light and the path of darkness came into being a long time ago. And I repeat, each tradition has given them a different meaning. They originated in the Druidic tradition. And when apprentices in the Druidic schools went through a series of transformations, tests, trials, and lessons, they showed a predisposition to a certain path. They didn't choose it. It is the path that chooses the mage. A mage doesn't choose the path, he has another task. He must follow that path, he must walk this road to the end, he must pass through all the stages of transformation, and only magic itself knows which path a mage should take. The excessive sweetness in the manifestation of those who somehow invoke and summon the forces is usually expressed precisely in the use of these terms. Light forces, light path, light mage. Those who practice magic know that everything in this world should be balanced. And if there is a light mage, there must be at least one dark mage to counterbalance him. If there is a light path, there must be a dark one. So you will experience an inner transformation already at the stage of recognizing your own powers. You will face the fact that someone who calls himself a light mage may not actually be one. And someone who aspires to the light path may simply not be predisposed to it. You are familiar with the theory of the origin of the human soul. This theory is widely accepted and taught in our school. It states that there are two paths for the development of the human soul, depending on the channel through which it was born, the path of Phoebus and the path of Dionysus. Roughly speaking, these are the channels through which souls incarnate, it is believed that the path of Phoebus is the path that predetermines the deeds of light. And light doesn't mean good. Here we are talking about a specific professional activity, working with the manifested light, working with the manifested world, working with the world of people. The path of darkness requires an inner knowledge that is of the highest priority. This means that all people who come through the channel of Dionysus into our manifested reality of Midgard come for the purpose of knowing themselves and the world around them, but in no way to serve. These are two different missions, different destinies, different functions. You must understand your own, you must feel it. Do not put on white clothes if they are against your nature. This is the first shock to the consciousness, which stops hiding in fear when it hears the word magic, and somehow starts to study, dig and gather information. But in order to reveal the meaning of this word, one must take the next step, which is to correctly understand the essence of light and the essence of darkness.
And in the initial stage, a person may experience a severe shock to learn that there is the path of darkness and that it is neither evil nor sinful. That it's no less noble than the opposite path as the light mages might think. If he is able to survive this shock and recognize certain prerequisites within himself, the next stage is open. But most people are not even able to overcome the terminology. That's why I believe that for some of you this may be the same revelation that you need to experience, that you need to recognize, that you need to understand.